Hi everyone, welcome. This is the roundtable for Escape the Ocean. I'm here with Jackson Kwiatkowski, the writer, producer, and director of the film. What's up, everybody? Next to him is lead role of Daniel. It's played by Will Bain and his co-star, who plays Emma, which is Grace Frazier. All right. We're, we're happy to be here, man. Thank mm -hmm. you for having us on the show. Thank you. Support, support. So I personally have what? seen the film... What? Never mind, go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 I was going to ask, like, what's the show name? Oh, uh, Escape the Ocean. The, the, the movie name is going to be Escape the Ocean, but the show name is... This is the roundtable for Escape the Ocean. Yeah. Filmmaker's Roundtable. There we go. There we go. Okay. All right. So I personally have seen the film already, I think, three times now, and oh. have instantly fallen in love with it, even while I was watching it. Um... It's just one of those films that very, like, really hits, really hits home uh, with with some scenes, and it's just it's one of those films that's just a, an emotional roller coaster throughout the whole thing, and it's I feel like it's portrayed by like the actors really well when it's something that I honestly didn't really think could have happened, especially at everyone's age. But um, <laughs> I'm not throwing shade or anything. Like that, but <laughs> that's good. It was genuinely, good. it was an, like an amazing performance from everyone, not me though. It was, we don't talk about that. I was but, gonna say including you. Thanks, um, thanks, man. But when it came to it, Jackson had showed me we were watching it, and it was just I've told him this like multiple times before. I had instantly forgotten that I was watching his film. I just thought that we were watching a normal film, and then I, I it clocked back in once I saw Will's face. I was like, oh snap, we're watching a D JDK film. So that's my take on the movie. I feel like everyone here is gonna love it, and. If it's out know. now, so go watch it. Yep. And then come back and watch Roundtable. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, uh, or whichever uh, order you please. Yeah. Or watch them all multiple times. And then go ahead and watch the pre production episode, production episode. And then watch all of the all of the episodes <laughs> on our podcast. Yeah. Um, okay, we're gonna carry on. Here we go. Sorry, sorry. And like we're and guests. We're guests. Yeah, like guests. Okay. So Thank you for I having have, us again. I have some <laughs> questions from everyone on Instagram. Um so first question is for Jackson. Oh, the boy. Director. Oh, dang. What inspired you to make this film? Oh, you know, that's a that's a very broad question for this type of film. Um, so I've told this story about 500 times, but I'll tell it again. Um, I was in a point of my film career kind of like I wasn't happy with the work I was putting out. And um, it, it was just kind of this crazy chaos with my friends and you know, bad camera work, bad lighting, bad audio, bad acting, bad story. And I really didn't know. And, I, and it kind of sat with me the whole fall of 22 and, and into this or into the spring. And uh, finally, November came around. And at the time, like I wasn't really focused on filmmaking. I was really finding myself in depression. Um, I fell into it, you know, probably during covid uh, and it carried on for about two years, and I just didn't really know. And at the time, in November, I started to get better, you know, started to, able to express myself. And, um, you know, the question came up, like, what what film should I make next? What can I make that's going to help me better myself as a filmmaker? And uh, I immediately thought, well, let me write about this, you know, crazy journey I've been on the last two years of, you know, this mental health scare, this, you know, in and out of the hospital because of an anxiety attacks and um, depression and not knowing what it was and then finally figuring out. So um, that's what really inspired me to make it. But also what inspired me is um, not many people know what depression is. And, and when I had it, I didn't know at first. Like, I, I just thought like, oh, man, like times are tough, tough, but like, you know, it'll get better. But it didn't. Um, and um, I told a friend what I was experiencing and, and they were like, well, I, I think you may be suffering from depression. And, and, and sure enough, like, you know, I didn't get diagnosed with depression, but, you know, I went to a therapist and um, kind of, you know, opened my eyes and, and really made me uh, know that, like, I'm suffering from depression and, and how easy it is to people just, you know, could continue their daily lives and, and not know that they're suffering from anything. So, uh, that's what really inspired me to make it is to tell my story um, and it helped me, you know, cope with the, the traumas that are about this story. And um, yeah. Yeah, that's um, I really I, I really like that what, what you've done so far with the movie, how you've made it into a movie to, you know, reach people out there because 
not a lot of people do that. You don't see a lot of people doing that. And, and especially at, at, at this age, with this early in films, that's just, I, I love to see that genuinely. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, what was the process to interpret the script and develop its execution with the other key creatives and the cast? Yeah, so early in, in, in pre-production, I had told myself, like, I don't just want to cast my friends for this film. I don't want it to just be another, you know, bust of a film and, and waste my time. Um, so early on, I, I told myself, well, we're going to find the right people to play this. And, um, you know, after I wrote the script in, in January and got it finalized, you know, the third week in January of 23, um, <laughs> of 23, I... Um, I broke it down, you know, section by section. Well, chill. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have too many inside jokes with this kid. Um, anyways, I broke it down and, um, you know, I just really fell in love with the storyline and, and the structure and how I was able to take my life and, and put it into this 25 page script. Um, and I took it down, I developed it, um, and it kind of all started just with the feeling of myself and and it helped that I experienced all these scenes in this film and I could really drive towards that, you know, dramatic and an effective screenplay um, that I wanted. And, and, um, you know, I was looking for actors and, you know, I was on, I think, SA film Instagram and just looking to see who followed them and, and who they were following and uh, came across Grace's account and a couple others in account shot every single one the same dm like hi i'm jackson making this film i'm 17 um would you be willing to audition and you know i heard back from grace and um that's kind of how all this started and and um yeah through grace um i met will and um and then we casted susan um which i i just uh that you know we uh, all the roles that we had, we we um, we got them right away. Um, but Susan, I think I think we casted her pretty late into the pre-production process and and you know into filming. And um, you know we went we uh, asked so many people to be a part of that, and and we didn't hear back from them or or they auditioned and it wasn't right. Um, and and Susan really just wowed everybody and it was really caring and really just took the chance. Like that's really why. I, I love Susan so much. And, and then Emily, we casted her the day before the shoot of her role. So, you know, shout out Emily to, for coming in and, and, and killing the role. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of how we, I broke it down and, and started with casting. Um, and then the rest, you know, flowed by itself. Nice. Uh, so kind of, kind of uh, um, piggybacking off what you said of how you found Grace and Will. Um, this is a question for both of y'all, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, what drew you guys into taking a chance with this role and Jackson as a director? Um, um, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so it, for me, it was also like a like a, a gut. Like once I got the role, um, there was just a gut feeling, and I was like, no, like no matter what, like you, like you should do this. And um, I honestly think it was God's voice talking to me, and uh, I'm very glad that I did do it. And I'm glad I didn't try to like quit or anything like that because um, I think it helped me uh, improve so much as an actor. And um, yeah, I guess I just took a chance and followed my gut. Um, for me, what it was is I was extremely eager to start doing some stuff and I was just really excited. So I saw the DM from Jackson and I like I mentioned it to my mom and she was like, well, I don't know how I feel about you auditioning for this guy. And I was like, oh, no, it's fine. I met him at Alamo City Studios, which wasn't true but it's okay (laughs) um but (laughs) wow so wow we admit to lying to our mother (laughs) it was for a good cause the round table (laughs) exactly everything happens for a reason but um i remember like sending in my audition and just kind of being like i'm probably not gonna get it like it's okay but then i did and i was like okay we're doing this and then we went and like we met up with Jackson and he was like, we still haven't filled the role of Daniel. Da, 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 da. We've and then seen a couple people. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't see anybody. <laughs> There's and nobody else auditioned for Daniel. Submit your damn audition tapes. <laughs> yeah, oh, guys, whoa, that's whoa. a big thing. You should do that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I remember getting in the car and I like called my mom. And then I was thinking, I was like, you know what? Will would be really good for this. So I called up Will and here we are. Here we are. Mm-hmm. 
did you guys um, have any doubts coming into it? Yes, yeah. I did. I, did. <laughs> I looked at, uh, what was it, 36 Souls? <laughs> and, uh, what was the other one? S- S- <laughs> Operation Saturn Ring. Uh, Saturn Ring. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was definitely skeptical but again i uh i had this gut feeling that i sh- i needed to do this and so i kind of uh was like oh, you know, at the very least it's experience and um yeah every day i'm thankful that i did it mm-hmm. um i'm sorry what was the question again um, with Jackson and how old he was? Sure, you ever oh, yes, that? I was. Um, I remember... <laughs> yeah. I like, yeah, let me tell you. Listen. <laughs> I remember like stalking like his Instagram and everything. And I was like, you know what? Why not? What's Nothing's really stopping me. And you know, it seemed like a really good story. And I was excited about it because it's something that's like also personal to me. And I was like, this is why I went into this business to tell important stories, to get things out there to that's people. True and to help others while also creating art with wonderful people. That's so, yeah, it was Wonderful just people. Wow. Yes. We have that on camera. <laughs> we have it on camera. <laughs> we have y'all, witnesses. Y'all, on y'all said be professional, so. <laughs> oh, well, 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 well. All right. I, I was actually going to ask that. If, if y'all do this, or if y'all did this, and we're more excited about the fact that you're reaching out to people with the storyline that, that it is portraying. Like, you, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like, so, mm-hmm. I... Personally, I've never struggled with depression, which this role opened my eyes to it. Um, so that was really cool. The way uh, I was also able to like learn something from playing the role. And um, but I didn't go in with the intention to reach other people. I was just kind of doing it because I loved acting. Um, but yeah, now now I see that it's a lot more big, a lot bigger than me, which, you know. Yeah, it's not. It's not about me. <laughs> <laughs> as the set of the sorry, lead. <laughs> which, no, which is, yeah, which is fine. Yeah, you know? it's it's about the other people. And it's about reaching mm-hmm. other people and helping them, giving them hope, and that's that's what what's important. And I think that's why I, I think that's what my gut feeling was leading me to. Yeah. No. Um, for me. I it never like I never like thought about it too too much. I just remember getting the script and being like, this is in line with the stuff that I would love to be putting out to the world. Not just like excuse my French, but meaningless crap. Like I wanna put something out there that means something. <laughs> hey. I was okay. expecting okay. Okay. I was like, expecting hey. like, it's cuss. Stop. Excuse my French. <laughs> I'm I am a professional, I swear. But um I just remember being really excited and being like, This is what I've been waiting for. This is what I love to do. And it was just I don't know, it was very heartwarming because you can tell like in the film and like throughout the process and with the BTS videos that like Everyone in this production is very deeply invested and everybody loves what they're doing and everybody really believes in the story that's being told and believes it's going to help a lot of people, which it should. Yeah, and to piggyback off of what they said, um, I told myself early on that I wasn't going to make this film just for me. You know, a lot of people and filmmakers make films for their personal gain, for their personal interest, and I told myself early on that it wasn't that. And um, I told my and I told you this early on, too, is like if, if I could make people resonate with the story and I could change people and I could make people feel what they f- yeah. have in the emotion uh, in the character that I did the day did, or did the job. Yeah, and, um, yeah, you made it. and 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 we did. So, yeah, we did. Mm-hmm. so this next question, I think, is going to be my favorite question. And it's for all three of you guys. Um, what was your favorite scene and why? Great. Ooh, whoa, hi. Okay, I can, uh, you need more time to think I can go. Uh, yeah, go. Okay, so my favorite scene is um, it's towards the end. Um, I guess I can't really spoil it, but... Uh, yeah, it's, you it's, out, right? it's out. Yeah, but what if they haven't seen it? Go watch it. Go watch this right we'll go watch it. We'll put spoilers ahead. We'll put spoiler alert. Okay, okay. <laughs> so uh, it's when Daniel and Emma are standing on the on the... Mm-hmm. On the mountain, and they're looking out into this to the view, and then uh, they flash back to when Daniel's in this um, in his bedroom, and <laughs> when he like just kind of like snaps and he loses it, and he's he's throwing stuff and he's crying, and he's 
he's asking God, like, why, where are you? And um, to me, I think I liked it because that I felt like that was the most realistic to me. Like, I, I, I think I've been there where I was like, where, like, where are you, God? Like, mm-hmm. why, why are you not with me? And um, also, I thought um, it was my most believable scene in the <laughs> film. So that's also why I like it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And are y'all you ready to go? Well, I want to say I, w- I was there for that scene. That was the first scene I saw That was of Will. the first day I, yeah, I that was first day Will. we met each other. And so that was like my first um, impression. Impression of Will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, that first impression, I was kind of in tears. Not gonna lie. Like me and Jackson just looked at each other. And we, were, we were just both like very like mm-hmm. teary eyed. I'm pretty sure we both shed tears because yeah. it was just a very powerful moment. And the fact that he did it in one take was also like yeah really yeah that that I'm all yeah the, I'm very proud of that scene mm-hmm. especially since I did it in one take because we were we were trying to rehearse it and I was like no it's just it doesn't feel right like I just need to do it and um I was Jackson was like waiting for me to rehearse it and, like <laughs> walk through it and I was like I I just can't like I I just need to do it and he was like okay and he, hit record and the rest is history i guess mm-hmm. i remember watching it like watching y'all film it and i never seen that like side of will before because like if you know will i mean you know what i'm talking about but <laughs> oh, then like they seeing don't him, know me they don't <laughs> know oh me. wait <laughs> well he's he's a very like calm person like you don't really like i've never really seen you get like genuinely mad or anything like mm-hmm. that so like seeing that out of you i was like oh my god <laughs> it was Gosh. very very intriguing mm-hmm. great <laughs> Solid. Um, and your nose got Grace. favorite scene. Hmm? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Favorite scene. <laughs> um. Oh bloody hell! Honestly, probably the hill, the one at the hill too. But like specifically the running up montage. That is so crazy. Specific- yeah. Aside from aside from aside from her like yelling at me the whole time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's why it was my favorite. <laughs> aside from uh. <laughs> My huge back, back sweat. That's also why it was my favorite. <laughs> I hate that so. <laughs> it was I'm so, so mad that I didn't wear an undershirt. That <laughs> it's day. realistic. I it's realistic. So I guess I so. Yeah. Telling, I, was, I showed my mom the film, and yeah. I was telling her, I pointed out, she's like, "Well, it's more realistic." I'm like, "Yeah, I guess." Exactly. But yeah, okay. That 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 scene is so pretty. Like that little mm-hmm. oh, yeah, It is. I it's love that montage. it's very sweet too, and I feel like it's just. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like throughout the whole film, you kind of. I don't know, because to me, like, you kind of see him as, like, more of a young adult, but in reality, like, when this was going on for, like, Jackson, like, he was just a kid, and I feel like them just kind of, like, running, it was just, like, highlighted that mm-hmm. he was young, he wasn't, like, he yeah. wasn't grown up, he didn't really know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Champ? Well, um, there are two scenes they said were my favorite, but <laughs> I'll give you guys my absolute favorite, and, um. It was, it's, it's kind of a long story, but we have time. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So writing this film, I think I started in like November on the exact same hill they ran up. Um, and I knew I wanted to compare depression to the ocean because I, I remember the first thing I had told my therapist when I went in, I was like, I feel like I'm just out in the deep waters of the ocean and just nobody's reeling me in and it's dark and it's cold and it's scary. Um, and I remember like, I think it was three drafts that I had gone with for Escape the Ocean and, and all, all different three beginnings. And none of them with the opening scene, obviously, that you guys see now. But um, all three were different. And I just kept read, reading them, and, and, it, and it just wasn't what I wanted. Um, and finally, on the fourth try, um, it, it, it's what you get with, the, with what you see now, with the opening scene of him narrating... Um, and those beautiful shots that we got down at the coast and, um, you know, the, the shots aren't perfect. The lighting's not perfect, but that's how it's meant to be. You know, the camera flows so you just you feel the edgy of, of the scene and you yeah. feel the just craziness with the camera movement and, and the words that he's saying. Um, and, that, and that was the first scene I wrote and then, you know, kept writing. And I kind of had like the foundation because I had that, you know, the title got born with that narration. The whole, you know, rest of the film and what it has to do with it, it just based off that scene. And then also the compare and contrast to that scene to the end scene. Um, little history on the end scene. And uh, I think 
again, we went through three drafts of a, a different end for all the films. Yeah. And I just wasn't happy with it. And we, we were down at the coast shooting the opening scene. And, you know, it was sunset. Um, it was, the sun was setting and, and we found this dock and nobody was on it. I was like, well, just, just come up here. Let's get some, you know, just B-roll shots of you walking. And, you know, we probably won't use it, um, but let's just get some shots of you walking because I like the lighting and, and I feel like, you know, this is pretty cool that, you know, you start the film in the ocean and um, you're on the outside and the sun setting and all that. So I think if somehow in post I could relay that to something, like, we'll use it. Uh, but we don't know. And then, you know, we wrote like an ending where I was in it. Um, oh, yeah. And that was, that was bad. That was bad. <laughs> um, and the original ending was, uh, was just, it didn't give me that feeling of, of a good ending. And um, I think it was early or late, late, late production, like the last day um, I had uh, typed up some narration um, talking about depression and kind of everything that I went through and, and how I feel now. Um, and, that, and that's what you see. That's what you see. And to see the, the, the dark images and the depressing narration in the beginning, and then you see the hope, like that just shows like the film started somewhere and it didn't just stay there. It, it went somewhere. Um, so I think those two scenes were my favorite and not just because they're beautiful on screen, but because of the process. None, none, of, none of those two scenes were planned to the T. Like we, yeah. we just let it flow. And that's what I really like about this film. It's just mm -hmm. that the whole, like, everything about it is just, I don't know, it's kind of like, like, I, th I think I've heard you say it, like, multiple times that you want to just go with, like, the motion of the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> which, was, <laughs> which was obviously a pun to the, to the film. Yeah. But it's just, like, that's what I love to see about it, you know? To um, see about it? Sorry. <laughs> 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 oh, there's Classic Grace. Grace. Classic Grace. Oh, Grace. Oh, okay. Uh, time out. Uh, you know, on this set, we, we became pretty close, and um, I think we became too close. So, we, yeah. we tease yeah. Grace a lot. Yeah. yeah but it's all in good fun. Here, we, we pranked Grace. Yeah, go watch the BTS. <laughs> go watch the BTS. That was my first impression of her. I pranked her. And Grace is now assistant director. Scary. What's next? What's next, boss man? Question will be for Jackson. Oh, boy. Oh, was the really? film mentally challenging to do and how did it impact you? Oh, wow. Well, um, <laughs> not, I don't think anybody knows this at all because I, I kind of kept it to myself and it was kind of key in my notes um, because before every scene, every film I do, I kind of write notes to myself and, you know, over the course of the shoot, I, I read them and, you know, like come back to, to earth. Um, and I... Um, Going into it, I knew that it was going to affect me. I knew it was going to, um, I knew it was going to show me my life in right in front of me. And I and I knew, obviously, anybody that's going to do that, I knew it was going to affect me. But I didn't know it was going to affect me how big it did. Yeah. Um. And and probably they don't know and nobody knows. But um, like there were some days like I didn't want to shoot. Um. You know, there were some days like, like I just wasn't present at the set. Like you, you, I was fighting through it. I was directing, but I was like really down and depressed and anxious during the whole summer. And, um, I think up until I think I started cutting the film, like it kind of went away. Um, but seeing that just my life in front of me, it, it, it did something to me that I just wasn't expecting. Um, so it did have a crazy mental challenge on me and um, a bigger one that I was expecting. And I didn't even know how to cope with it at the time. Obviously, you know, we were shooting days and days. Like I didn't have time to like, okay, like let's cry. Let's, you know, focus on me. Like, no, we got to direct the movie. Like we got to go. Um, and finally, like even now, like I'm kind of just starting to yeah, like, rewind. Um, to, like, the and the shoot yeah. So it did. And it impacted me pretty, pretty big, but, um, it feels good to get it off my back, get it off my shoulders, and uh, move on with the next. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, this next question, and I'm pretty sure it is the last question, um, it's for Grace and Will. How did you guys prepare for your roles? Um, Let me hear you. Grace. Okay. <laughs> um, so, 
I'm trying to think of how I started. So initially, I just kind of read through the script and everything, like specifically with Emma's character. And I kind of created a playlist with like what I thought was like her vibe and and everything, like her music that she would listen to. And I would like listen to that. I was I would do character work and like break down, break down Emma basically. And I would text Jackson a lot and be like, Hey, I know this is like based off someone. Can you tell me a little bit about her? And <coughs> he would. And then I would text Will and be like, Hey, how do you like getting that kind of dynamic going to make sure like everything's connected and everything's accurate. And uh, yeah, when we would get to set, I would like drive here with the playlist going and I would wear clothes that I feel like Emma would wear. Not really clothes that I necessarily would wear. Some of them, the overalls outfit, totally would wear that. <laughs> but um, a few of the other outfits, I just like, I wouldn't wear that. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it was just a lot, of, a lot of that and journaling as her and like journaling like a bit of her backstory and like going through the stuff. Did yeah. this go on while you were like at home? Like, you know, yeah. Like, oh my God. Yeah. And- yeah, definitely. Um, specifically with the journaling, like the breaking down and memorization that came fairly quickly, but the journaling, like in depth of who Emma was and what she was feeling and going throughout these times while interacting with Daniel, it was just cause like, she's a person. She's not just mm-hmm. someone that's in Daniel's life. She has her own life. So I kind of created that in my head and then brought that to the scenes. Champ. <laughs> so, um, my, um, I think I started with connecting uh, with the character where I could. Um, there wasn't too much for me to, like, that actually happened to me and Daniel, but there was one big thing that um, I had in common with Daniel, and that was that both of our grandparents had passed away. And so I really grabbed onto that and I used that to pull me into the character and then I um I asked my mom um who st- studied depression and um she knows a ton of people who have like battled it and it's and it's been super rough for them and uh so she knew a lot about it I was able to get a lot of insight from her on how it feels and um I then I went to like uh, my script analysis and I um, kind of would write down I like thoughts that Daniel might have um, like how like thoughts that weren't in the script but you know that I thought Daniel would have um, based on I don't know my not just me but like just like like the character and I don't know like the mix of me and my character that those thought bubbles anyways so um, then I <laughs> then I kind of I'd memorize my lines I'd practice saying them I also made playlists and stuff like that um, it was basically just like really sad music anything that made me cry <laughs> and um, I I would just listen to those songs get in the mood and then just practice my lines practice my lines practice my lines and then um, I I think I asked you some questions too um, yeah I just tried to learn everything I could. And that's that's why it really opened my eyes to what depression was. Because before, I I literally thought it was just like being sad. And um, but yeah, no, it's definitely not. It's definitely a lot. There's a lot more to it than that. So uh, yeah, hopefully hopefully my performance displayed that. Mm-hmm. It's great. Both of their performance was great. And shout out Susan Emily uh, that are oh yeah I'm not yes. on here, but they Susan helped me great. helped me big time with my transition to to film acting because. Yeah. Because Susan's just amazing. We love Susan. We and love Susan. Susan's great. Susan. Great Susan. Mm-hmm. Love, Emily. You, Susan. <laughs> love you, Susan. Love you. Film mom. <laughs> <laughs> you have any more questions? I was going to ask you, Jackson. How oh. did you prepare for the movie? Did you have to prepare for the movie? Or did you know that you were going to like possibly spiral into a deep depression? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, who? Yeah, that, that wasn't on the list of questions, so it got me. That's the question. That's my question. Um, okay, so repeat it one more time. So how did you prepare mm-hmm. for, for the for the movie okay like these are two kind of separate, yeah. separate questions well, let's, you know? let's answer that one first okay, okay, okay. yeah <laughs> um i think preparing wise i i kind of try to do it really um the same with every film i uh write the script i send it out to the actors i get it cast but then i i um i don't go straight into it i i kind of give it about two weeks or a week of just not reading it you know because 
if you if you read it right when you write it, it, it it's, you're just not going to see things that you time would give you. Um, so I took like two weeks off and then I came back and what I do is I print out a copy of it, you know, grab like three highlighters, a couple pencils, and I go through like letter by letter, word by word of what the script means. And I even do, I put myself in, you know, Daniel's shoes and Emma's shoes and write their thoughts too because, you know, if they don't hit on something, like I got to remember like, okay, I was thinking this, so yeah. give him that or give her that. Um, so I broke it down all the way um, and I kind of spent like a week just re-breaking it down every single day in a different way. Um, and then mentally, like I said, like I didn't know that I was going to fall that hard. Um, you know, I was kind of at the time working on different coping things. And then um, actually during the whole filming process, my life, um, personal things happened and yeah. uh, didn't really help. And we had some people in and out of my life and uh, some crazy things that were was going on. Um, and that really didn't help at all either. But um, just preparing for chaos. Like I tell everybody, like film means two things to me. It's organized chaos and it's just solving problems. Like that's all, if you know how to do that, you, you'll be good at directing and that that's all it is. And I went into each day prepared with my little notes. I mean, you know, you yeah. know, I had them in the back of my pocket, you know, not that I'm showing anybody cause they're personal, but I prepared, I prepare as much as I can. Um, cause I think that's important. I think they could both agree on that. I think anybody can, I think preparation is, key to anything you do yeah. um and yeah so what was the other part of your question i mean i think you kind of answered it. like did you know that you were gonna like constantly smile yeah yeah pretty sure you were yeah for sure I, I yeah I, yeah so it just took you all by surprise this whole thing i mean because you, you really couldn't tell yeah and, and it did and also i think what plays a part in that is at the time i didn't know how he was gonna <laughs> act i didn't know like i just saw his auditions and like there was some still character development um, in his country accent that he had on the tape, and hey, I was uh, fresh off. <laughs> you had a country accent. I had. Uh, I was like, uh, what was the line? He's like, I want something like this. Like, you're like, I want something like this. Quote. Couldn't be more. Like, more you're true. like, yeah. couldn't be more true. <laughs> couldn't be more true. Um, and I didn't really know, like, like we put in a ton of work before we filmed uh, of analyzing his character, and I think once he started to hit that note um and even grace like those that scene at towards the end with that conversation like that was a real life conversation yeah and seeing that coming around and like oh shit, like this is real yeah um and and then the fact that they did it so good that i was like okay like i wasn't expecting this and i think that's catered to like you know working with my friends and yeah. not expecting the best yeah um but yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys got like it's an open book for whatever. Oh, no. no, man, I think just go watch the movie, man. Go watch the movie. Yeah, yeah. go watch the movie. Fake. Go watch the movie. Go watch the podcast. Stay tuned. We got a lot, lot more coming. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, like two more films, really. Three, maybe three, maybe three. We're gonna before you leave, before I leave. Three. Was three. All right, so we're so buckling we down. The summer one. Mm -hmm. Then we have twenty dollars. Oh, and yeah. maybe Your, the one, the yeah, the co-director. Yeah, we got a lot, a few things coming. And then I have one too. I don't talk. Okay, about so maybe yes. maybe four, four. Yes. four. So y'all, um, y'all really need to stay tuned. Yeah, subscribe to the channel, man. Uh, go watch the video, and we'd love to hear your feedback. Um, Please, you know, write us a review, shoot me a text so I can post your review online, and uh, share it with your friends and family. And and don't watch it by yourself. I think you could really spiral into a dark place if you watch it by yourself so put it on with your family man you you have every tv nowadays has youtube so put on youtube make sure you watch it in 4k i, I did not <laughs> buy a camera that cost <laughs> eight grand for you not to watch it in 4k so make sure you watch it in 4k 4k watch it with your family talk about it with your family talk about it um don't just watch it and then go to your room and like oh okay whatever yeah don't watch it just to watch it yeah don't watch it just to say you watch it watch it and genuinely like dive into it. Yeah, Put don't yourself and everyone cheated. Yeah. Don't watch it just just to see us. Like watch it for the story and for the lesson. Mm -hmm, Cuz it's Cause, bigger than all of us. Yeah. yeah. It's not True. I mean we we d we did this because we loved acting and we love mm -hmm. directing and um but it's it's for uh it's to instill hope in people mm -hmm. that need it. And also like if you're any anybody going through anything like 
we're here for you. There's so many people here for you. And, and I just want you to know that you are loved. You're not alone. You're truly not um, alone. And, and anything that you go through, somebody in this world has been through. Somebody's been through it. Don't think you're the only one going through something and, and don't mm -hmm. choose a, a bad way out uh, because there's so many good ways. And like the end of the film, there, there is always light at the end of the tunnel and you just got to look for it and keep yeah. waiting and keep hoping. Um, so yeah, that, that's my last little yeah. take. And never, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, go. No, you go. No, it's cool. No, go. Oh, okay, yeah. sorry. I was saying never, hey. <laughs> I was going to say, um, never be afraid to ask for help because there really is no shame in it. Just you do what you got to do. But also ask the right people for help. Yeah, for that's sure. Yeah. You definitely, yeah. Yeah. Make sure there's trust there before mm -hmm. you seek, uh, I guess, help. Yeah. But yeah. So thank you guys for watching. Mm -hmm. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Shout out uh, Joaquin. Shout out Will. Grace. You'll definitely be seeing them and, and some upcoming projects. And Susan and, and, and Susan and Emily. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and then shout out um, everybody that's worked hard on this film. Jackson's mom. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mom. Mom. He's over here on the couch. <laughs> Bald guy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so thank you guys uh, from the bottom of my heart. Oh, Joaquin. Time. Wait, did you say thank yeah, you to Joaquin? I said Joaquin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's high. laughs> there you go. Um, but yeah, also if you guys, you know, uh, are feeling generous, donate to our uh, film in the summer. Um, we are really looking forward to it. Um, and everybody here at this table is involved in it. Um, and that's all I could give. So uh, finish this video because it's done right now. <laughs> either if you haven't watched the movie go watch the movie um but if if you've watched it watch it again and share it with a friend or a family Please. um we love you we thank you mm -hmm. and um peace out